Welcome! In this instructional video, we are going to practice how to calculate average rates and instantaneous rates. We had just completed our lecture on kinetics, lesson one, in which we were looking at the rate of chemical reactions. We defined chemical kinetics, how quickly the reactants turn into products, making negative reactant concentrations because they're being consumed, or thinking of it uh, conversely, you could think of products being made so how quickly a reaction occurs. The most common units for calculating rate are in molarity per seconds, M over S, molarity per seconds, concentration units over time. Some of the tools I'll ask that you have out, we must have a graphing calculator. To, to calculate a derivative on our calculator requires a graphing calculator where we generate lists. The other tool page I have out is my how to calculate an instantaneous rate. And notice on our original equation page, this is a paper that we picked up on the opening day, chemical formulas for kinetics, first order, second order, zero order, and so far. This one over here, calculating instantaneous rates, right next to the Arrhenius equation, I have updated. I've kind of streamlined so many different instructions. So I'm going to ask that you just eliminate that from your um, test taking tool. And I want us to focus on this one instead. It is just the same copy, but a cleaned up fewer step version, eliminating some of the unnecessary graphing steps. So how to calculate an instantaneous rate. This is a test taking tool coming from lesson one. Well, let's take a look at this page as our model so we have a sample question that we can practice together. Here's a chart in which we have a hydrocarbon reacting with water going on to form products. What we notice is that in our first column, we have time data starting at time zero and 10,000 seconds go by. Here is what we're measuring, the concentration of the reactant, C4H9Cl. Notice that as time is going by, the reactant's concentration is decreasing. Makes sense, reactants get used as products get made. So as time goes by, we've measured the amount of reactant left. In our first question, we're asked to consider filling in this last column of this table, calculating an average rate and showing the work here. Now a lot of this eventually will be done simply on our calculator, but in the beginning it's important to show the work so that we know how to fill them out correctly. Notice that at time zero, I've already kind of X'd out the box here because it makes no sense to talk about a rate if I don't have an interval of time. So the average rate has been eliminated from the first row. We'll talk about the second row. And I'm just going to number those rows so we can have a clear understanding of which rows I'm referring to. An average rate and filling in how quickly does the reactant disappear between time 50 seconds and time 0 seconds. Remember that it's the change in concentration over the change in time. So comparing row 2, 0.0905 molar units over, well let's compare that to the original concentration of 0.1. So we can consider that concentration unit at time 2 to time 1 and just kind of taking that that change, how much did disappeared over the course of 50 minus 0 seconds. So the change in concentration set over the change in time. And when we hit that, it will end up to be a negative number because the reactant is disappearing. 0 0.0905 minus 0 0.1 does indeed come out negative. I divide that by the difference in time interval, which is 50 seconds, and there's my rate. Notice that rates are negative on our calculator because the disappearance of a reactant, but we do not report negative rates. There's no such thing as a velocity with a negative sign. So I'm ignoring that. 1.9 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity per second is my unit. Do not report your rates as negative. The negative really is just a convention to let us know the reactants are disappearing and products are appearing, but rates are never negative. We're going to continue that same process filling out the grid. So the next time interval, we have a concentration 0 0.0820 from the previous concentration 0905, the change in molarity over the 
time interval, 100 minus 50 seconds, and we'll get a number, and we'll calculate that and simply report it into the num into the grid here, 0 0.0820 minus 0 0.0905 divided by the time interval of 50 seconds, and now we have 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity per seconds. In the next time interval, the concentration has decreased to 0741. From 0820, there's the change in concentration over the time interval, 150 over 100. And so let's calculate that. 0.0741 minus 0820 divided by the time interval of 50 seconds. And we get a value. I think I might have hit that wrong. Hang on. 0.0741. It didn't match the other number, so I knew I'd made a calculator mistake. Equals divide by 50. And now that number makes sense. 1.58 times 10 to the negative fourth. So clearly I had made a, an error in the calculation because it didn't match what I was calculating before. Keep going. We'll have 0 0.0671 from the previous 0741 set over the time difference of 2150. Calculating with me 0 0.0671 minus 0 0.0741 divide by 50. Don't forget to hit that equal. I almost did it again. 1.4 times 10 to the negative fourth. And you can clearly see how eventually we'll just turn this into calculator work, but for the first example I think it's important to show how I'm calculating the number. Change in concentration over the time interval. Now here 100 seconds has gone by, so this will be a, a different value change in concentration over the change in time where now the change is a hundred seconds. So hit it with me. Divided by a hundred this time and we get 1.22 times 10 to the negative fourth. Home stretch. Next line 0 0.0448 minus the previous line 0549. There's your change in concentration and again, the time interval would be from 400 to 300 seconds, a difference of 100 seconds that went by. Hit it with me. Equal, divide by 100, and we get 1.01 .01 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity per second. Here's the next one. We have 0368 from 0448. That time interval is also 100 seconds. From 500 to 400, so 100 seconds had elapsed. 0368 minus the previous line of 0448. Divide by 100, the time elapsed. And now we have 8 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity per second. And one more, my friends, calculating from the time point zero two minus 0 0.0368. And now the time that elapsed was 800 minus 500. So 300 seconds had gone by. Change in molarity over the change in time. 0 0.02 minus 0 0.0368. Divide by 300, the time elapsed, and we have 5.6 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity per seconds. So when we're beginning, we calculate and show the work, but you'll see, you know, eventually by test time, this will all just simply be done on your calculator and you'll just be filling in the grid. Now let's take a different approach. This particular problem we've just been discussing is an average rate when time elapses, certain amount of time intervals go by, I can tell you with confidence how much of the reactant was consumed. The difference here now is an instantaneous rate. An instantaneous rate is a snapshot of time, not an interval, but at an instant in time, what is the rate of our reaction? So when we're looking at generating um, an instantaneous rate, I just want you to know this is an involved process where we're taking a derivative of a curve. 
So you might remember from your, your uh, math days when we have a curve, which is what a reactant, as it's being consumed, what it looks like in just a general form. If I were to graph time versus concentration, we come up with kind of a curved line. As time goes by, reactants used. At an instant in time, we'd like to know the rate. And the rate would be in molarity per second. So it's really just asking us to take a tangent of this curve. And this is done with the help of a calculator. We do not have to graph. That's the beauty of having the calculator. Now let's go through those steps and show you how easy it is indeed to calculate an instantaneous rate. And we have two examples to do at time zero, which is the initial rate. And after 300 seconds go by, now what is the rate? So we'll have two generating from lists. So this is what I'm asking. Lesson one, how to calculate an instantaneous rate. We're going to need our calculator. I'll be referring to the equation page as we type in these lists. So step number one in calculating an instantaneous rate, we need to enter into our list of the calculator time in list one and the concentration in list two. Alrighty, so let me model what that says. You're going to hit your stat key, you'll enter one for edit, and you're going to type in those lists using your cursors. An important note, never type in a zero as the last concentration, it will always give you a domain error. So notice here in the last row, I have a zero in my example. So when I generate my list, I do not include this one. So this one is eliminated otherwise we get domain errors. We can't have a zero in the list here. For concentration, we can for time, but not for concentration. So this is the line that gets eliminated when we generate. So make sure we have highlighted that. Never type a zero in as the last concentration or you'll get a domain error message. So with me, please do this with me with your calculator so you become for proficient. We're going to hit stat and we're going to hit our list. So I just hit enter and notice we have our list coming up here now. So our stat key gets us to the list. In list one, I want to hit into the time. So I'll start with the zero. Then I hit 50, 100, 150, 200, 300, 400, 500, 800. Do not type the last line. Use your cursor key and go over to list two. At list two, the first value here is 0 0.1, 0 0.095, oops, 0 0.0905, sorry, 0 0.0820, 0 0.0741, 0 0.0671, 0 0.0549, 0 0.0448, 0 0.0368, 0.02. Do not type the last line. So you can see that they are matched correctly. All right. So step one, get these into your list. List one is time. List two is concentration. Now in the next part of our um, equation page, a little helpful hint, we need to find the equation of the line. The best fit line is exponential regression, which is choice zero in your calc. So now when I'm ready to do this, I hit my stat key, I slide over and find calc, and all the way down, hidden even, you got to go down further, it's choice zero. See, that's exponential regression. That's the choice. That's going to be the best fit line. I want to find that for list one comma list two. And so that's what I'm doing. List one, list two, exponential regression, and I hit enter. When I hit enter, I have the following screen. Y equal A times B raised to the X. What we want to do is to transfer this information into the graphing part of our calculator. And that's what the next part will have us do. I don't want to have to handwrite any of this as I go to find a, a derivative. So what I'm now going to do is transfer this equation by the following steps. And that's this part here. See my Y equal button? I press that. If I have anything in there, I'm just going to clear it out. I want it to be a blank screen. The next button I hit is VARS. See it here? The V-A-R-S. Number five choice says statistics. That's the choice I want. Number five, stats. 
I want the equation menu. See it sitting here? So I slide over two spots and I highlight the equation. And I just simply hit regression equation. So I hit enter. And now what it's done for me is actually transferred my equation that I calculated from up here into the graphing area of the calculator. All right, saves a lot of typing in. So we have our graph all set and we are able to um, take a quick peek and see what it looks like. So number three is optional. One of the things I would say right here is check your windows. And I'm going to explain, but I'm going to add that on. Check your windows of your graph and here's what I mean. See this window button? I'm going to press that and I'm going to check my um, values for X minimum and X maximum and the same for Y min, Y max. In other words, if X is my time, I better have it set up where I can start at time zero, but my list is going to generate all the way through, you know, over 10,000 seconds. Right now, my window is only set to 95. It's not large enough and that will just create a domain error and sometimes that gets frustrating. I want to make sure that this window is quite large. I'm going to put in 10,000 there. It's 100,000. So 10,000. That'll be plenty of uh, space for this graph. And then from Y min, we go from 0 to 1. I want to make sure that the, the uh, list 2 as well is you know set up to where I can have enough information. 63 is plenty big. I'm going from 0 to 0.1. So maybe that's too big. I could just put a value of 1 there. Alrighty. So checking your windows just to prevent a domain error as you go to graph. You're now ready to calculate the instantaneous rate at any time. So let's model how to do that. So I have my y equals all in there. I've checked my windows to make sure my uh, windows are large enough for the, the uh, list that I've entered in. And now I'm ready to take a derivative, an instantaneous rate. We want to hit this calc key up here. So second function trace is where I find calculate. A derivative is choice zero. dy over dx stands for the change in y over the change in x, an instantaneous moment in time, a tangent to the line. So that's the choice we want to enter. And you'll see that graph start to appear and let it think for a while. And then, then you'll see this come up on your screen. And all I need to do is hit the time I want to solve for. Now remember, we want to solve at time zero, so I'm just going to type zero, x equals zero, and I get a number. The number comes negative, but remember that's because it's a negative tangent. We're ignoring the negative. We never ever report rates as negative. So this instantaneous rate, 2.015 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity per second initial rate at time zero, this is how quickly the reactants are disappearing. Now we've done all the work already, so to calculate a next instantaneous rate, it's as easy as saying second calc, we want to calculate a derivative, so that's choice six, dy over dx, and the number that I'm going to type in this time is 300 seconds. x equal 300 equal and here is my answer down here. It's tiny, but I can see it. Not a negative, 1.102 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity per second. As 300 seconds went by, the reaction slowed down. Reactions, of course, when the reactants are plentiful in concentration, they go much quicker. Then as the reaction proceeds, they slow down. So here we've modeled how to calculate instantaneous rates using two examples, getting familiar with the steps in your calculator. It just takes practice. And then this more of a tedious process of going through line by line to calculate an average rate. And again, just to repeat, eventually this work will not be asked for. You'll just fill it in. But I did want to uh, show it how to do that the first time.